joy of meeting needs and not just on the reward. Now, let me, let me say this clearly to you to help you understand. God always rewards those that give because that's, that's a part of the spiritual DNA of God's economy. It's the law of spiritual harvest. You plant a seed and you get a harvest. So you can't give and, and, and not get blessed somehow because that would contradict uh, God's law of sowing and reaping. All right, And I think most of you understand that. Now, however... A mature giver knows that there is great joy not just focusing on, on the harvest, but focusing on the joy of meeting the needs, especially the needs within the church that are presented and that come through other people. Now, this, though, requires, requires, <laughs> requires incredible faith because giving this way with expecting to not be repaid, in other words, just to give because there's joy in giving is is for many people that next step of maturity that they need to take. They understand the sowing, the reaping. They took the 90-day challenge, and they recognize that God honors his word. But now it's learning to take that step of faith and give because God has called us to give, or God is speaking into your heart about um, taking a, a, a sacrificial step. In, in just a moment, I'm going to talk to you about the last bag of oatmeal. I sold one of these bags last night for $500. We're going to get at least 501 for this last bag this morning, all right? Can't let Saturday night out, do you, by the way? But what I'm getting at, you see, that takes that next step of faith, coming alongside and seeing the big picture and knowing that God wants to do something remarkable through it. Now, the Apostle Paul addressed these points when he praised the church in, in Philippi for their generosity. And he says this out of Philippians 4, beginning in verse 17. Not because I desire a gift, but I desire fruit may, that may abound to your account. But I have all and abound. I am full, having received from Aphrodite the things which were sent from you, an odor of a sweet smell, a sacrifice acceptable, well-pleasing to God. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Now unto God our Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. The Philippian church, they were growing in maturity. They gave in this situation not to give, but they gave specifically to help meet a need, and that was with Paul and the ministry that God had called him to, to continue preaching the gospel to the ends of the earth. Now notice that Paul is, is, is commending them for uh, a, a great attitude, and, and there's this sweet aroma. It actually, the scripture says odor, and we think immediately negative when we hear odor. So a sweet aroma that, that was to, to, to fill the nostrils of the Lord Jesus Christ, and that, that would just bring such a joy into his own heart. And and I don't know about you, but I have loved the rain the last couple days, and, and, and you smell the freshness in it, and there's a freshness that comes into our lives when we understand the full maturity of what it is to, uh, what it is to give and have the proper attitude. You know, this kind of giving has a double reward. There's immediate joy uh, of a full heart, and then there's that inner peace and contentment that comes along. And so, as we prepare to give today, know that... Um, um, there, are, there are not only needs within the body, but there are needs within our community that this church has been positioned to be called to, uh, to be an ongoing help, an ongoing service, an ongoing ministry into, in some very uh, unique and, 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 and opportunities that are opening before us are so, so um, man, they're so exciting. And we have, um, these last few months, been positioned in such a way that we can come alongside and do something more than we have dreamed about in a very, very long time. And I'm going to talk to you about that in just a moment as well. But with that in mind, if you're at the end of the aisle, if you'd reach down, grab that, uh, that bucket that is there. Hold on to it for just a moment, please, if you would. And let's pray together as we receive our morning tithe and offering and those things that are going towards ruin today. Father, we thank you for every dollar and every dime. And God, we thank you that there is a spiritual law of sowing and reaping, but we also thank you, Lord, that there is joy and contentment that comes into our heart as we come alongside to, to meet a need. And God, today as we participate together, as we give, as we, as we uh, give back to you that which you've called us to be good stewards of, as, as we tithe, as we, as we bring offerings today, Father, I pray that, um, that something would happen in our lives, that, that spiritual growth would continue to happen, and we would understand something even more today because we participated by giving. And so, Father, we just thank you for what you are doing in your house, your church, 
And uh, God, we give you all the glory. We pray this in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. If you'd pass that along the aisle, there'd be an usher there to receive that. And um, we will receive that today from you. Thank you so much. A couple weeks back, we had um, really one of the largest groups of uh, new members uh, come to new members class. And this morning, I just want to uh, introduce, some are here today, some were here last night, but uh, I would like to introduce these new members to you, and they, they are welcome to stand, um, and if they would do that, and so I'm just going to read their names, and uh, there will be pictures coming up. I don't know if the pictures actually match. They do. Look at that. They match my order. I love that. All right, so we got Jackie, and we have Bonju. And we have Irene and Crystal and Reuben. I know you're here. You can stand here. And come on, stand up. There we go. There we go. Keep standing. And we have Richard, who is carrying out the offering. And uh, Udo, who was here last night. I don't think he's here. I saw Joy, his, his wife, last night. Uh, Mark Mills and Sasha and Georgia and Haley and Cherish. I don't know if I saw Cherish this morning. Um, Lisa and Thomas Brown, I, are they here this morning? They're, uh, Denea and Sophia and Tony and Zach. You know, if your name's going to be heavenly, you've got to be a member of a church, right? And then, so heavenly and Isaiah, uh, Zelda and Tracy, all right? So those are our new members today. Give them a hand. Thank you so much for coming alongside the church. And um, God bless you. You may be seated this morning. Thank you so much. That's impressive, huh? Is that great? All right. With that in mind, we've got some announcements for you. And uh, here they come. Hello SJA, I'm Margaret with this week's updates. Our Grief Share support group will begin meeting on March 18th. This is a 13-week program that will meet on Tuesdays at 6.30 p.m. We invite all who have lost a loved one to journey with us and begin to heal. There is a limited space for this group, so please see Leo and Melody at the gazebo following service. Seniors Bible Study, taught by John Gifford, is this Monday, March 3rd, at 7 p.m. in the Worship Room. Let's get wrapping! We have 100 brand new children's fire Bibles that need to be wrapped in clear contact paper before we present them to our children. Please join us Tuesday, March 4th, at 6.30 p.m. in the box for a Bible wrapping party. Mark your connection if you would like to join in on the fun. Pre-purchasing script gift cards for the regular things that we all buy throughout the week, which helps raise funds for our youth and children's ministries, is what script is all about. Stop by the script office just outside the front doors of the sanctuary to purchase your gas, grocery, and entertainment cards today. And lastly, don't forget to turn off or silence your cell phones. Right now. No, really, turn them off now. Thank you, church, and have a great week. And the Oscar goes to <laughs> Margaret Newborn. Excellent. Very good. Well, fantastic. There are a lot of great things going on here at, uh, at the church. And uh, we are so, uh, we're so honored to have the opportunity to serve with, uh, with so many great folks. Uh, I don't know if you noticed, but, uh, well, I, you've noticed by now, but uh, Jessica will be having a baby here uh, right around Easter. And then the water around here has something in it because I don't, uh, it's on Facebook, so I'm allowed to talk about this now, but uh, Frankie and Rob are going to have a baby as well, and so she won't stand up and acknowledge that, but she's, uh, she's upstairs this morning, so it's very exciting, so don't drink the water. And um, there you go. Now, last week, we, um, we usually honor uh, a volunteer every month, but uh, the one volunteer that we wa wanted to honor a couple weeks ago was on a missions trip, serving. So, pff, you know, there you go. And, uh, 
And then I was thrown off last week by some other stuff, and so I missed the makeup last week. So I am actually getting to February's mover of the month. I know it's March. I know, I know, but I can't uh, miss that. But this young man um, not only is from great stock, but he has learned very, very well uh, from his family. You would be hard-pressed to find a family that serves uh, anywhere, not just this church, anywhere uh, better than the Gibson family. And Nathaniel Gibson is, uh, is a remarkable young man. See, last week he had a tie on and all that stuff. Today he looks like every other teenager in the world. And, uh, but what most of you wouldn't know is not only does Nathaniel uh, serve, he's actually helping in nursery today. He ushers from time to time. Uh, he's involved in the worship team, but he gives us a day a week here in the congregation or uh, uh, to serve along with, with Joe and, and along with Mark, and they come along and they get projects done that just need extra manpower, and he's been doing that for well over a year or so, and so uh, Nathaniel, you are officially today the mover of last month, all right? So there you go. God bless you, buddy. Let's give him a hand, all right? Fantastic. All right. Okay, I was telling you that uh, <laughs> last night, I see there's this, there's this economic law, it's called supply and demand. And when I had 300 of these, I was happy to let these go out for a minimum of $5. And I encourage you to, to give more, and often you would give 10 or 20 or, or whatever it was, and some even paid 100 for a bag, and that was fantastic. Well, last night, the law of supply and demand works in my favor. Because I only had two. So last night I set a minimum price of $500. And because I do, these are the last two bags. We are cutting you off this weekend. And, and you know, if you like this stuff, this is your opportunity. And so um, I will accept 501 or higher today for the last bag, all right? And maybe God is speaking to you. This is that principle we talked about that sometimes God by his Holy Spirit just kind of prompts you. And you're going to take that step. And I, I know Tim DeBolt wants this bag really bad, and I know there's some others, but we will be going for, does anyone feel like led to go like to, you know, 501, 525, 550? I'm auctioning myself right at this moment, like <laughs> 600. I mean, is anybody there? Because this, I, I am not letting it out for five bucks. That's what, it, I'm not letting this out for under 500, all right? So just so you know today, this is what it's going to cost you. This is the last bag. This goes towards... Our, our children and everything else, and, and these, these Bibles that you'll be wrapping on, uh, on on Tuesday night, this is all generated by what has been sold through oatmeal, okay? And so, someone be thinking about this, right? Has anyone kind of got an inkling that they got, you know, $1,000 they want to spend on this today, you know? Come on, I'm just, just kind of working the room. We got, huh? Who's someone thinking about <laughs> well, Saturday night stepped up in a powerful way. All right, so there's the deal. You can see Cindy afterwards, and she'll be taking bids on this. And uh, there you go. Last thing before we get into the word this morning is uh, in your connection, you will see your financial snapshot. You have never seen a financial snapshot from this church that looks like this. This is absolutely phenomenal all right this is fantastic this is miraculous and uh the only thing that's wrong with it is we put the wrong date up in the top corner how did we miss that i wish we'd had that in november 2013 that would have been amazing you can see we use a template when we reproduce these all right okay we missed it but this should be february snapshot and um, we budget for income of 130000 or 65000 is the minimum that we need for income in a given month. Uh, year to date, uh, our income is $175,000. That is 45, let me do the math for you, 45000 and change ahead of budget. But here's the really cool thing I've been telling you for almost two years, that our pathway to freedom, in other words, $80,000 a month allows us to begin to get beyond the minimum and start doing the things that are necessary, like closing the road so we can get the alley closed. You may, I <laughs> just got to remind you again, Estadio is now a two-way street. So if you go to side parking today, 
Do not be freaked out when someone is coming up the other way and uh, wondering what you're doing by uh, parking on the wrong side of the road and everything else, all right? But there are gates that it will be going in to, to shut down the alley soon, and there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a couple leaky roofs that we rediscovered this weekend, um, and there's some other projects, some new restroom facilities that we want to be able to either outright pay for this year or just come alongside and, and, and challenge you that we need maybe a little extra money to partner to get those things done. And folks, we do that as long as we are moving at over $80,000 a month in income. And so far, year to date, we are doing just that. So praise the Lord, right? Fantastic. There's only one thing that if I can nitpick... And my wife said, oh, I shouldn't have mentioned that, but I do need to mention this, is that the one area that we have fallen a little bit behind early in the year is in regards to ruin, what we do with our ministry partners around the world. And uh, we just need to be mindful of that, that we have folks that are counting on us. Uh, they don't have a congregation to stand before on, the, on a weekend and, and, and let them know what's going on and everything else. And so they count on us. And in, in our partners' lives, we are their single biggest contribution by month. And so if we get behind, it affects them as well. And so I want to continue to encourage you in regards to ruin. But overall, just I couldn't be, <laughs> I couldn't be more, uh, more blown away. Fantastic. God bless you. All right. How many of you have experienced a miracle in your life? Let's see your hands. Take a look around, folks. Just hold it up high. Just take a look around. That is... A significant amount of people. How many of you need a miracle today? A significant number of hands, all right? Okay. And that's what I want to talk to you about today. Last week, we, we kind of set the groundwork for, for how the Holy Spirit uh, works in the miraculous. And today, I want to talk to you about how to position or how to receive, uh, how to receive a miracle we talked about last week why God does miracles, and, and, and very quickly, it's to defend His holiness, to demonstrate His compassion, to, to defend the truth, to display His glory, and to discharge His will. And if you don't remember any of that, you can go online later and watch that sermon again. But today, I want to build on those concepts, and I want us to, to discover together how to receive and how to position ourselves for the miraculous in our lives. And now that sounds almost selfish, even as I'm saying it, but we'll lay out some spiritual groundwork for you to have today so, you, um, so you'll have the proper balance in how to move forward and to expect God to do the miraculous when there is need in your life. And of course, we need to prepare our hearts and our mind and, and our emotions to receive. And time will not allow us to cover every point. Even last night, I I just didn't have time. I, I knocked some things off the list as we're going through because there's what I call cross-platform here. There are some things that are, that are universal truths from Scripture uh, that absolutely apply in regards to the miraculous. And then there are, some, uh, there are some points or some specifics that just relate fully and wholly to the miraculous alone. But we'll begin with the first one, and this is, this is, this is a universal truth. And this is true for our lives each and every day, but... It begins with this, we need to sanitize our hearts, and that's done by the word of God in our lives. And Romans 10, 17 says this, consequently faith comes from hearing the message, and the message is heard through the word of Christ. Let me read that again, consequently faith comes from hearing the message, and the message is heard through the word of Christ. Now, this is, this is only true, as I mentioned last week, when, when the Word of God is internalized in our lives and not just intellectualized. It's, it's, it's not enough just to, to read those words, but it's, it's, it's meditating on those words. It's allowing the truth of that to, to develop roots in our heart and into our lives, and it begins to produce fruit. Folks, I, I meet a lot of people that, that say, well, I got the gospel. In other words, they know some of the truth. But they know it, but they don't practice it. They don't live it. They do not apply it to their situation. And, 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 and to, in order for our, our lives to be pure and, and holy bef before the Lord, to be that sweet aroma that Paul talked about, it is necessary that our intent, that our heart is, is clean and, it, and it's pure. See, the Word of God must, must touch the human soul. And then as, as that is done, the Holy Spirit 
just churns the, the soil of our hearts and, and it keeps it from becoming hard or, or shallow or, or, or cluttered with thorns and weeds. And then as we saw this weekend, the heavens open and the, waters and, uh, are, the water is added and the nutrients that God adds are necessary to produce good fruit in our lives. The sanitation process, this purifying our hearts, is a process where we say yes to the Holy Spirit and say, Search me, O God. That was one of the, 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 um, in the, in the dangerous prayer series, that was one of the messages to search us, O God, and how dangerous a prayer that is because that is that moment when you're saying, go deep and begin to reveal to me those things that I no longer see or I blocked from my memory. Many years ago, when I moved to California in 1988, I grew up where we had more hockey rinks than we had swimming pools, Right? And so when we moved to California, my dad said, we're going to build a pool. And you know what? It was fantastic because I I just had always dreamed of this ability to be able to to go swimming anytime I wanted. And we took great joy in this pool, except I didn't, you know, this, the pool was this whole new learning curve all in and of itself. There are pumps, and there are filters, and and there is water tests, and there's algae, and there's your pool can go green. Did you know that? And and, and it can do weird things, and and you have to understand you become part chemist, part construction worker, and everything else in between to make sure that your pool is working at at a high level. And there are filters in there that unless they are regularly rinsed or cleaned, um, you know, they, they begin to clog up and your pool becomes, well, it runs less efficient and it, it, and it begins to work harder. And as it works harder, it's actually not producing as well as it should. And so the chlorine levels aren't right and the acid is all wrong. And it's so true of our own, our own lives. Our hearts are like that. We can, we can have things around us that are just kind of well, the sin and everything else, and it just kind of clogs the filter of our hearts, and we can, we can work harder, or we can, we can want more to, to receive from God, and yet, yet we're, we're pushing forward, and we're not seeing the type of results, or, or we're maturing in Christ the way we want, and it's because there are things in our life that are they're absolutely holding us back, or there are things that are just separating us from understanding just this complete surrender, and this complete openness to allowing the Holy Spirit to search our hearts. You know, one of those things is, 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 is like uh, is bitterness or, or the lack of forgiveness. And I, and I touched on this a few weeks ago, but I want to follow this up again out of Luke chapter 17, verse 5 and 6. And it says this, the apostle to, said to the Lord, increase our faith. And he replied, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mulberry tree. And by the way, mulberry trees, they grow great root systems. They are not the easiest thing to take down, I assure you. And so you can say to this mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it will obey you. Now, that would be a uh, magnificent thing to be able to. You have some problem issues around your home, I'm sure, where you would like to speak to faith. Okay, mulberry tree. Okay, uh, sago palm or whatever. Out of here. And, um, and you know, I, I, the principle here, what we're talking about is that there is faith that is necessary in a life, and it doesn't take uh, a huge, what we call huge amounts of faith, but what it takes is the proper heart to be able to believe in that, that God can do the impossible, or God can do that which is difficult, and sometimes you and I are living our lives in such a way where we begin to doubt that God is able. Luke 17, 3 and 4, just preceding these, uh, preceding these verses, it talks about this. So watch yourselves. If your brother sins, rebuke him. And if he repents, forgive him. And if he sins against you seven times a day and seven times comes back to you and says, I repent, forgive him. In other words, faith. To be able to exercise this type of faith that says to the mulberry tree, be moved. It requires that there needs to be forgiveness in our lives. That there needs to be nothing separating us from the love of Christ. Now, This is a very difficult one for many because we live our lives with people. And I don't know about you, but there are a few annoying people in my life. And I'm sure for you there are some annoyances 
uh, perhaps at work, or maybe they're in your house, or maybe they're on your commute, or wherever they are, but there are sometimes, there are things in our lives, or people in our lives that just cause us all kinds of grief. Many years ago, an individual close to me uh, lied about a conversation that I was having with them, and because I uh, keep everything in confidence, that is what I, what I need to do when I am in, in counseling, I keep things in confidence, I could, not, I could not defend myself after this person went out and began to slander me on this conversation. And they began to say things that I had never said, and I was really left in a place where, frankly, I was just torqued. I was really, really angry. And um, I just wanted to, right? Ever been there? Folks, maybe some of you are there this morning. You're so there, that person is sitting next to you. And uh, just keeping it real, keeping it real. And you're still in your head, breaking these chains, breaking these chains. <laughs> and I didn't realize that something happened this week that brought that whole experience back to my memory. And I had to stand before the Lord again and say, God, help me to not be bitter. Help me to I, forgive again. I, 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 I just ask your your blood on this situation again. Show me how to love in this situation. Show me how to, to, to do this properly. And, and, and you know, in most cases, I, I can do this just fine. But this one is just, it's like the enemy says, I know the one that really just pushes your button. And it seems like the enemy knows your buttons and you've got so many buttons you could fill a shirt and everything else. Right? <laughs> they just got it. I like that. And... Uh, But folks, the opportunity that is before us that allows the miraculous to move in our lives is to allow or to have our hearts completely pure before the Lord. But sometimes we just don't recognize it because we are blinded by the bitterness and the things that are going on in our life. Many years ago, this lady stood before me at an altar and she said, could you please pray for my husband? He is a miserable person. He is mean to me and everything else. And I just know if if he would accept the Lord, then everything would be just amazing. Our marriage would be better. Everything would be better. And he would be going, he'd be with Jesus for eternity and everything else. And, and, and so she, she just kind of laid this out and she was talking. There was, I just, I, I, I don't do this often, but I just felt like I said to her, I said, are you prepared to forgive him for all the, the nasty stuff he has done in your life? And she looked at me, she immediately stopped crying, and she said, what do you mean? I said, are you willing to forgive? And she kind of mumbled a little bit and said, of course, and I want him to know Jesus. And and you know, here's the amazing thing, here's the grace of God. I don't know exactly, but it was a few months later that this man came to an altar, gave his heart to the Lord, and, and he was doing fantastic, he was um, he was just growing uh, leaps and bounds, and everything was great, and, and she, I saw this lady come down to the altar, and I was excited, and I thought for sure she was going to talk about it, and she said, you know, my husband is just a miserable man, and I said, whoa, 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 wait a second, I thought you said that if, if he got to know Christ, that everything would be well in, in, in our home, and she said, yeah, you know, he has, and so much has changed for the good, and and yet I just, I can't even look at him. He's so happy now, and it makes, it makes me miserable. It's a true story. I am not exaggerating. And I went, have you forgiven him yet? She walked away, shaking her head. And then some months later, this man was killed tragically in a car accident. And, um, and, and she came to me and she said, you know, 
for the longest time, I was just, I held so much resentment against him. And I want you to know that a few months ago, I, I forgave him. And all that bitterness that I've been carrying in my life for so many years, it just melted away. And that before he passed, we were doing great. Wow, sometimes we are blind to ourselves. Again, it reminds me of a parable about something in the eye, right? Think about it. Oftentimes we can miss. We are so busy finding the flaws in everybody else and praying for what God has to change in their lives when we should say, God, purify my heart. Number two, we need to seek miracles. Now that sounds kind of selfish. That sounds self-serving, but I, I want to point you to an amazing story out of John chapter 5. This is part of your extra reading, but why don't you go ahead and turn there. And here in John chapter 5, you're going to meet a man who has been uh, sitting by the pool of Bethesda off and on for a period of 38 years. That is a very long time. This man is, uh, is crippled. He is not able to get into the pools there. And it is said, tradition says that an angel of the Lord comes, stirs the water, and the first one into the pool is healed. Now, folks, this is one of the crazy stories of Scripture. i got to tell you, I don't fully understand. And I don't know why God does this in this way. But this is one of those stories. But this man has been waiting for a miracle for 38 years. And Jesus shows up goes straight to him and he asks them one of the most powerful scriptures or one of the most powerful questions of scriptures of scripture and it's this do you want to get well you see that seems like such an obvious question right but the fact of the matter is that so many folks they on the outside, it's the appearance, this is what I want, and everything else. But when it comes, push, push comes to shove, we're probably not ready to be well. We perhaps aren't ready to move into that place where there's wholeness. Believe it or not, there is sometimes um, comfort that comes in our own misery because we know nothing else. We sometimes or somehow fear that we're not going to be able to operate as well or we're not going to be able to operate healthy because we have built infrastructure into our own life to manage our own dysfunction. And so this man, well, here's what Jesus says, and, and again, you think, my goodness, 38 years. He can never get to the water first. He doesn't have a guy like Dave Gibson to pick him up and throw him in the water as soon as the water stirs. But I want to just point something out. 38 years is a long time. How has this man been feeding himself for 38 years? How is this man being, he doesn't live there, so how does this man get to and from over 38 years? How does this man manage all the other things in his life? Now they may be, uh, diminished and everything else, but how does he manage and not somehow manage to be the first one in after 38 years? So Jesus' question isn't a question of compassion. Jesus' question to him is a challenge. You, who've been lying there for 38 years, who can get everything else done, do you want to be well? And the amazing thing is, this man is so struck by the question, he answers poorly. John 5, verse 7 says, Sir, the invalid replied, I have no one to help me into the pool when the water is stirred. While I am trying to get in, someone else goes down ahead of me. Now you're going, well, Jeff, that's probably true there's no one there that's i suspect that's absolutely accurate but remember folks he has been coping for 38 years in another way to have all the other things in his life provided for and taken care of do you think he really wants to get well and the fact of the matter is the man responds with an excuse and sometimes we respond to the impossibilities of what is going on in our lives with the excuse. Oh, that's too big. Oh, God can't do that. Oh, that is, <laughs> whoo, that's a doozy. No, 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 no. I will just, um, 
And you see, that's the devil's playground. He loves that. He loves when you begin to doubt what God is able to do in your life. You know, it was significant to me this morning as just, just how, and this is how I saw this, how faith rate was welled up as we were singing Break Every Chain. There was just a welling up of, of faith that was stirring, that was rising up. There was an increase in faith. And why was that? Because you know the truth that God is able to do the impossible and that includes you. He can do the impossible in your life. He can do the impossible in the situations. He can do the impossible in the circumstances and in the relationships. He can do it. And, and when we were singing them Break Those Chains we recognize that we are carrying chains of doubt in our life that says, ah, oh, I just, uh, I can't. And for 38 years, and you begin to take excuse after excuse on, but you seem to manage other ways, but in this one area, you can't extend faith. Today, I'm telling you, to expect a miracle, to want to be well, to allow those chains to be broken for your life, to be set free, to move forward in the power of the Holy Spirit, to fulfill the purpose for which you were called. Number three, we need to live simple faith and encourage others to participate with us. You know, sometimes we, uh, we believe that, that as we mature in faith, that somehow our faith shouldn't be childlike anymore. Of course, the example of this is, is when Jesus is telling the disciples, hey, let the kids come. Come on, come on, come on. I want to touch them. I want to bless them. I want to hug on them. And, I, you know, I want to do all that stuff. And, and then the example of unless your faith is like that of a little child, you cannot. You cannot know the kingdom of God. And, 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 and so that, that, that challenge to, to have simple belief is, is, is perhaps more difficult because as we grow and mature, we somehow think that we are to be sophisticated in our faith. And Absolutely, we need to mature, but there is that simple belief that God is able, that should never leave us, and we shouldn't rationalize away, or we should not excuse away the difficulties of our life. One of the most powerful things that can happen, or one of the most powerful things that I am honored to do on a regular basis is to encourage people. They, they come, and, 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 and they're hurting, and they want prayer, and sometimes they get to the point where they, they don't even know how to pray anymore and they're, they're spiritually just so weary and, and, and beat up. And, and, you know, to have that opportunity to, to come alongside and pray and to love and, and just to, to take that issue before the Lord, it just, it just increases faith and it's, it's a powerful thing. But every now and again, someone will come along and, and that isn't what they want, but they want to, they want to challenge me with something or, or, and perhaps you've had this experience that God is speaking to them about something and they just, they just want someone to come alongside and pray with them. Many years ago, I was a, a speaker at a summer camp and I was, I was there for eight straight weeks. And, and not only would I speak at night for, for the, what we call the campfires, but I, I'd be kind of... I became the unofficial pastor, and, and, and I, I did morning devotions with staff and, and, and all that kind of stuff. And, and a guy at the camp who was working there about my age had been re- rec- recently released from prison. And, um, <laughs> you know, Gord was a, a fantastic guy and a, a really interesting guy. And, and he had just been released, and it's hard to, uh, hey, let's, let's face it, it's hard to get a job and be, get reacclimated into society when you have spent some time behind bars, and, and the camp said, hey, come on, we believe in you, and uh, we want you to be a part of this ministry, and so they took Gord in, and, and, and what I think struck them, and it certainly struck me, is that Gord knew how to pray, and I asked him once, I said, Gord, how'd you learn how to pray? He said, dude, I was in prison, I had a lot of time. <laughs> so he was practical about his faith, Right? And I can't even begin to imagine what he had to pray about in prison and everything else. But he, he prayed and, 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 you know, he, he, he started to hang out with me and I hung out with him. And, he, and I have a certain pattern uh, as I prepare for services. I, I, I always go into a service having spent time in prayer ahead of time. I just, I, I just, I can't just walk in here and go, okay, what are we doing today? I, I, I've got to get what I call my my head turns straight, and I got to, you know, I, like, especially on Saturday, there's something, there's, there's a shift that happens in my life about noon on Saturday, and it's, it's no longer Saturday, it's, it's, it's game day, 
and I'm getting ready for Saturday night and for Sunday, and so I always, I always come prayer, and the same was true of speaking every night at this camp, and, and I would take some time before the services to pray, and Gord said, can I pray with you? I said, sure, and that became our pattern, and then he, he suggested, well, why don't we pray about the morning devotions things, and I said, Gord, I'm not a morning guy, and, and, and devotions were early, so well, why don't we pray the night before, and I said, that is fine, we'll do that, and, and, we, and we started to pray the night before, and and the morning devotions and staff time was very, very important. Kind of got the final instructions for the day, got the inspiration and, and, and the tweaking all done. And that was really very, very vital. And as we're praying, Gord looks at me and says, I just feel like the Lord is, is telling me that, I, I, that you and I are to anoint all the seats with oil. Because God wants to do something significant tomorrow. And I'm going to tell you something about my faith right now that it maybe will surprise you. But I, I am very, very practical. And when I hear something like that, I immediately, I just immediately went, no, I don't think so. <laughs> and he looked at me kind of strange. I said, I, I, he goes, I, Jeff, I feel so strong about this. And I said, why? He said, well, I feel like the Lord, I said, well, then go ahead. I don't feel that. And he said, and then he said, okay, then you pray about it, and I'm going to do that. And I said, well, we don't even have oil. He goes, that's okay. I found some suntan lotion over here. It's, it's 30 SPF, and I'm going to use that. And I'm like, ah, okay, all right. And so Gord is, bless Gord's heart. I mean, you gotta, I love this guy to this day. We have a great relationship. But he is going, and they're pews. So he's going, or it's one big, long wood pew, right? And he is just holding on to each part where he thinks, a body is going to sit, and he is praying down heaven. Like, now I'm getting a little bit, well, I'm embarrassed for my lack of faith, first of all. But then I'm going, oh boy, I want to see where I'm sitting tomorrow, right? Because <laughs> this is getting really significantly good. And he's praying, and as, as he's praying, I'm sitting there, and like the Lord's saying, okay, Jeff. Why do you walk around a room before you preach in it? Why do you pray ahead of time? Why do you get your game face on? Because you want the power of my presence to be in the midst, don't you? Well, of course, it's not about me. He goes, then why are you embarrassed about anointing chairs with oil? Thanks for the help, Wanda. Usually she's on my side. She just, she, yeah, she threw me under the bus. Well, anyways, long story short, I got in on the, f the last part of that blessing, and, you know, I was just trying to catch up, so I put suntan lotion on my arm and just walked down the bench like this. <laughs> I had to get it down. I couldn't have Gordon get all the blessing out of the deal. It's true. Whoop! But now I'm excited. Kind of pumped. And usually I'm dragging in with everybody else for devotions. You know, at 6.30, we're all doing this in the morning. But I'm there early. Gord's there early. Gord's actually walking around the chapel. I love this guy and hate this guy all at the same time. He's praying. Me. I can hear a murmuring as I'm walking up. It's Gord. He's praying behind. He's still calling down heaven. I don't think he's gone to bed. No, seriously, I don't think he went to bed. And so you come in, you come in with some anticipation. Woohoo, something really wild is going to happen in this place. It's going to be awesome. <laughs> Off the hook, right? <laughs> so we go through worship. And worship at 6.30 in the morning with a bunch of very tired adventure camp staff. They've been riding horses and pioneering and, and doing ropes courses and all that stuff. They come in dog tired every single morning. And i got to tell you, worship is kind of about like, this is the day. It is a day. Oh, here we go for another day. It's not a spiritual fill the tank worship moment. It's not break that reach. That would have freaked them out. Had they, wow! What do you mean? And so I'm thinking, you know, worship is going to be fantastic. Yes, uh, so I'm thinking, okay, they're waiting for the word. My part, right? I'm thinking, okay. Woohoo! 
I got to tell you, it was probably one of the most uneventful and just dull devotionals I probably have ever given. Because I think most of them were... So, as a matter of fact, that meeting was pretty uneventful. And the director always closed the meeting, and so I said my amen, and I went to sit down, and and Mike, who was the director, was getting up, and as he's coming up, this young lady by the name of Colleen, who's very quiet, um, just raises her hand and says, can I say something real quick? And Colleen had been on horse staff, was on horse staff, and she had been bucked from a horse uh, uh, a week or two earlier, and she really kind of messed up her back. And she had been to the doctor just recently, within a day or two, and the doctor was encouraging her to um, let her contractor resign from her position because her back could not take the strain of like six more weeks of constant riding, right? So, hey, someone forgot to turn their cell phone off, isn't that great? Yeah. <laughs> Anyways. Um, and she said, you know, I, 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 most of you know that I've been really hurting and everything else, and and, um, and I've been contemplating uh, having to, to, to leave the ranch. And, and she said, and I came in this morning, and I sat down where I always sit. And, and I got to tell you, I did, didn't notice it quite at first, but usually when I sit down, and these are these old hardwood benches that we had in churches, you know, I said, you know, usually these are not the most comfortable things. But as I sat down, you know, I... I I was feeling a little bit better. I I wasn't having all that stuff running up and down my back and legs and all that extra pain and stuff. And she said, you know, it was pretty good. And and then we got singing and and I usually sit while everyone stands to sing, you know, this is the day and all that stuff. And and, and I started to feel better. And she said, you know, the, the crazy thing is, I feel fantastic. I just, I absolutely feel like, Maybe God has healed me this morning. This is, this is amazing. I feel great. As a matter of fact, she stayed the final six some weeks of camp and she never had another problem. And I, and I sit there and I think to myself, I could have missed that. I almost missed that. And it took the simplicity of faith and someone being responsive to the Holy Spirit. And it took my own getting out of my own way because I was going to deny it and go, that's stupid. You know? Because I have a sophisticated faith, you know. I've got a, I got a pastor title, so I'm really woo right there, you know. John in Bible study alluded to this verse uh, the other night. I love this verse because most people don't understand the context of the verse, but I love it. Matthew eighteen twenty says this: For where two or three come together in my name, there I am with them. Okay, we all, well, many of us know that verse. And we quote it, but I think many of us are missing the greater truth in this verse. This verse is found in the context of a church dealing with sin. This verse is found in the context of people having relationship issues and struggles with each other. In other words, this verse is calling the body of Christ to come together and recognize that God is able to move the mulberry bush in their midst and throw it into the sea if they would just begin to believe that God is able, even in the trouble or the problems that they're experiencing. So if God can heal a church wound or an issue that's going on, I am convinced that when we come together with other individuals, God is still in the midst and he is able to work through the problems and the challenges and the issues that you are experiencing as well. So if the Holy Spirit is in the middle of the conflict, that's awesome. Because it's then The healing and the miraculous can begin. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever, and we can experience miracles. If our faith is more childlike, not always dismissing that which we feel is unnecessary or parking our pride at the door and beginning to agree not only with what the Holy Spirit is is prompting in our life, but what others of faith are beginning to move into. And Finally, this morning, We need to develop a sensitivity when praying for the Holy Spirit's leading. Now, sometimes, folks, people will come up and say, I feel like the Holy Spirit wants me to do this. 
And, and I got to tell you, in some cases, something in my heart immediately resonates and I go, yeah. Other times I go, ah, no. And, and usually when I do like an ah, no, it's because either it's contradictory to the word, right? And I believe that anything that God is, is, is prompting us to move for, forward in needs to line up with the word. It shouldn't create confusion and everything else. And so I have no problem when someone says, I feel like I'm being led this way and go, eh, I don't think so. Or let's, let's talk about that. Let's see what, what, wh- how we got to that conclusion. Let's see what we can grab from here to there and, 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 and that it's beneficial and lines up with Scripture. But there is, there is something that absolutely needs to be developed in the life of every believer, and it's simply this. There needs to be a sensitivity to the Spirit's voice in our life. I mean, the prophets of the Old Testament, they talked to God. And God talked back. And Abraham and, and Moses had running dialogues with him. And, and, and Daniel interpreted dreams. Folks, I don't know about you, I, I, I just have those weird dreams where I'm being chased by zombies and I can't get away. Right? My feet are moving, but I'm not actually moving. Right? I mean, what does that mean? Do you think that's really for the body of Christ? I don't think so. <laughs> but others of you have real dreams where God is showing you stuff. And I know some of you, and I'll ask you every now and again, has God given you a dream recently? I just want to hear about it. And, and that's awesome. That, that's a gift that does not happen to everyone. But the sensitivity to hearing the voice of the Holy Spirit in our lives, and Elijah is the classic example, just defeated the prophets of Baal, then went up and, and, you know, uh, there hasn't been any rain, there's famine in the land, and he goes up to the top of the hill there, and he looks out over the sea, and he sees a little tiny cloud the size of a hand, and he has the confidence to say, famine's over, drought's done. Says to his servant, go tell the king, that rain is coming, and there's a confidence there. And folks, i got to tell you, that cloud wasn't so big. Yesterday, it was not hard to look out into the sky and go, I think it's going to rain. <laughs> Most of us could have done that and been right. But looking out over the sea when it hasn't rained on the land for an incredibly long period and see a little cloud the size of a man's hand and go, that's it! <laughs> How do you get to that place? There's a sensitivity that needs to be built into your life as out of relationship and that sanitizing of your heart and you begin to experience that which God wants to do. And then, and then, and then Elijah's led up in the mountain to a, a very real, um, uh, not a test per se, but so he can understand that God isn't always in these big things and in the loud or the very physical, but often he's just this little bit of a whisper. And we need to learn that. And oftentimes, folks, you and I, need to learn that the truth is many of us do not give ourselves time to see or hear the miracle of god that's going on around us you know some of you have been praying about something so very long and and god is doing something but because it just becomes almost rotor without even emotion in our life anymore we just kind of do it by habit we can sometimes miss the very thing that we've been praying about and the fact of the matter is, in our society, we are busy. And in our society, we, we acknowledge and we praise the busy. And we, we, we talk about how, how, um, how much work they get done and how valuable an asset they are to the business and, and how you know, they can always just manage and they can do all this. And, and I think sometimes we, we get lost in the fact that busyness is not, is, is, is not godliness. And we somehow, somehow take all that praise for ourselves. And again, we want to be good stewards of everything we have. And this is not necessarily the point to spend hours on here today. But the point I'm getting is, is that oftentimes we're just too busy to see what God wants to do. And that, that happens in our lives as everything is going on around us. And sometimes God just wants to speak very softly. And our hearts need to be sensitive to what the Holy Spirit is saying into our lives. Here at SJA, we just absolutely need to continue to do the small things and the things that God has asked us to do in our lives in order to mature and to move forward. I mentioned it a few weeks ago, but in talking about knowing uh, how the Holy Spirit helps us understand God's will for our lives, 
And sometimes we get lost in that. And the point was, we need to go back and do the last thing the Holy Spirit talked to us about doing. Instead of going, eh, creating or making it like an option, going, no, I don't really want to do that, Holy Spirit. Next card, please. Oh, next card. Oh, next. oh, that's a good one. I'll take that. You see, folks, he has you on a journey. He has you in the midst of his hand and a purpose. And when we begin to say to God, I don't want to do that, or I don't want to do this, I don't want to do that, and just begin to tell him and say, that's what I'll do. Then we begin, you see, what we do is we lose the sensitivity to knowing what the Holy Spirit wants to do in our life in the immediate. It's really not, I, I won't say this is, um, how do I say this without... Well, no, I'm trying to formulate the idea in my head. I can't just say it yet. You know, there's only a few instances in Scripture where, and it's with Abraham, he negotiates with God for this, the city of Sodom, right? And the righteous people. But folks, more often than not, we try to negotiate with God on everything. And what moves us forward is if we would just be obedient now and then begin to learn and know that he is a good God not wanting to withhold anything from you, but he wants you to know how to move forward so not only you can appreciate them, but manage them in a way that would bring glory to the king. It's, uh, it's not rocket science, but it's just as hard in the sense that it's a deliberateness of our heart to surrender before the Lord and say, you are the king, I am not. You are the Lord, and I am the servant. I don't want to be that guy where Jesus comes up and says, do you want to be well? And I don't want to be that guy that says, ah, oh, I don't have time to be well. Or I'm too busy. Or yeah, next week on Tuesday. Perfect. I can slot wellness in then. Hmm. It's amazing, folks. Let me, let me read for you today um, something that came during worship, and it's, it, it's pertinent to, to the close this morning, and then I want you to have this connection card handy as well. Kevin, if I could have a little keyboard, that would be great. This came this morning, and this is, this is the last point where we are sensitive to the Holy Spirit and what He wants to say in our hearts and our lives. And so someone today during worship wrote this, and it was given to me during break, break every chain. Whatever you are going through, I am with you. In the storm, do not cry out in fear, for I am here. I am calling you out of the boat. Again, see some of the themes of what we sang this morning, right? I am calling you out. You are to walk above your circumstances. I like that line alone. Keep your eyes fixed. On me, and you will always rise above. Why am I sharing this? Maybe this was just for me, and I don't think so, but I'm sharing this because, you see, this is what the Holy Spirit wants to speak into our lives as we spend time with Him. He wants to encourage us. He wants, us to, he wants to give us hope. He wants us to begin to take steps of faith. You are not to sink or struggle in your circumstances. Look through the, uh, your eyes of faith. Call upon my name, the great I am. Whatever you are in need of, I am. If you need healing, I am your healer. If you need provision, I am your provision. If you need rest, I am your peace and rest. If you need freedom, I am your freedom. I am the beginning and the end. I am. Call upon me. I am. I am. See, isn't that amazing? Okay, yeah. But what I wanted you to see in reading that was, do you see how the voice of the Holy Spirit just brings it all together? See how the voice of the Holy Spirit doesn't run around and say, bet on black. See, oftentimes we're misusing, okay, God, if, 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 if you will just... I'm going to buy this lottery ticket, and if you just let me win that $600 billion, I will give you a 1000 Praise the Lord. Praise. So spiritual. I worship me, Almighty God, 
next to me. You know what, folks? Here's the deal. The Spirit of God is speaking into your life. It makes a whole lot of sense with what He's revealed and what He's told us about what is to come. It's a perfect example of having a sensitivity to the Holy Spirit, and every one of us is capable of that. But it requires the sanitization of this thing, removing all the junk and the bitterness and the unforgiveness and the fear. And then it requires that perhaps we would recognize that there are others that have a very simple faith, but they hear God and we need to come alongside in those things and we can be a part of something much greater than ourselves when we begin to listen to the Lord. If you have your connection card, go ahead, take that out. And If you're our guest today, thanks so much. I met someone new today, first time. And uh, this card's for you and for anybody else that's uh, visiting with us for as our guest today, if you take a moment just to fill out this card, we're not going to call you a hundred times or anything like that. We're going to send you an email and a card in the mail. There you go. All right. And if you come back again next week, we're going to repeat it. But we only do that two weeks because after that, we don't want to hound you. All right. We figure you're going to make a decision whether or not you're going to do life with us in a couple weeks time. And so um, that's where we're going with that. Okay. Now, if you turn over the card, there are some, send me info about taking my first steps with Jesus. Maybe that's someone in this room today. You're going to take that first step with Christ. Or maybe you'd like to uh, attend. You didn't even know that we have a college group. It's kind of a grassroots thing. There, some of them are sitting here in the second row. Obviously, Jesus is coming soon because college students never sit in the second row. <sighs> Get right with Jesus. He's coming. He's coming. He really is. You want to know information about that group? We need some volunteers and media. We have a great media team, but there's a, it's a high demand, and we, we need folks there. And then, of course, if you're going to help us at the Bible wrapping party, all right, and um, that would be fantastic. But I want to draw your attention to your memory verse under next step. We have, um, um, you know what? This is last week's connection card. I have this week's connection card somewhere. Thanks, Dave. I put them in my iPad, and sometimes, there we go. I thought that was wrong about the memory verse. Yep, Matthew 18, 20, right there, where two or more were gathered. That's right. Extra reading, Luke 17, John 5, Romans 10, extra reading. Remember Matthew 6, that says, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these other things will be added to you as well. You see, there is balance. Because some of you are going, well, I need to, I need to seek miracles. Okay, the balance is, is you need to seek the Lord, right? But then he begins to do things. And, and then when there is a need in your life, like, let's raise our hands. How many of you need a miracle in your life today? So we seek the Lord. And we say, God, you know what I need of. You know the miracle that needs to happen in our lives. There's balance there. Number two, surrendering to his will builds understanding. Surrendering to his will builds understanding. And finally, believe and receive. I'm hurrying because I'm way over time today. But folks, in a few minutes, we're going to invite our prayer friends to come after we sing this song. And some of you today absolutely need to partner with someone in prayer. You need to come alongside and say, you know what? I need you to pray with me today. My faith's weak or I just, I believe like the Holy Spirit is, is leading me this way. But could you pray with me so I, I'm, I'm doing this right and not doing something goofy and starting my own cult this afternoon and all that stuff, right? That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about lining up with Scripture and what God's, God's revelation is for us. And so we want to do that. It's very, very important. But for those of you that, that said you need a miracle today, as we sing this song, I just want you just to reach out and say, God, you know what I have need of today. You are a good God who knows how to give good gifts to his kids. Purify my heart. Help me not to lean upon my own understanding, but in all my ways that I would trust in you. And know, Lord, that you are the healer, the provider, the one that gives peace. All the things that we've heard about today. And of course, if today is the day that you're going to take your first step with Jesus, praise the Lord. We will invite you at that time. Stand with us as we sing together.
this song, and then I will invite my prayer friends immediately following this song together. God bless you. Prayer friends, if you would come at this time as well, if you haven't passed that bucket along to collect your connection cards, we will do so. We, we read every one of those prayer requests. We pray over all of those. And uh, just remember, grief share, opportunity to sign up for that. That class is going to fill up very, very quickly. You can see Melody out there in the gazebo today, and she will make sure to take care of that for you, get you into class. Folks, 
I don't know what miracle it is, but many of you raised your hand. I would encourage you to not leave this place today without praying with someone. Maybe, maybe it's your spouse or your friend that you came with saying, hey, could, can we pray together before we leave today? I just there's, there's something that I'm really significant and believing for in my life. Would you, would you agree with me in prayer today? And folks, if someone says something to you that is so big, be very careful with your reaction. Because remember, it's not your prayer that's going to answer it. See, we come alongside, we have the opportunity to raise faith together. And it's God is the one that does the healing and the work. And so, it is too difficult and too big for you? Yes! Not too difficult or big for the Lord. So we pray in faith together today. All right? You'll be coming in just a moment. If someone is here today that want to take a first step with Jesus, you want to ask Him into your heart to be Lord and Savior. I didn't spend a lot of time talking about salvation today, but I did talk about the purity of the heart. And that's where that begins, that step, where we ask the Lord to send His Son Jesus to forgive us of our sins. If that's anyone in this room today, Leo is always ready to receive you, to pray with you. But I'm just going to take a quick look. Is that anyone, Not that I want to embarrass you, but I just want to make sure we don't miss you. And sometimes this step of faith, just say, yeah, that's me, is what gets this all going in your life. Is that anybody in this room today? You're ready to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Is that anybody in this room today? Thank you, sweetheart. Thank you very much. Is there somebody else in this room today? Somebody else? Well, that's fantastic. Praise the Lord. In just a moment, when others are coming for prayer, we want you to come too, okay? That's awesome. That's great. Praise the Lord. Church, God bless you. Thanks for being here today. Congregation, before you all go running out that way, let people come this way, all right? Pray with someone before you go, all right? If you know them, feel comfortable to pray with them. God bless you. Thanks for being here today.